Hey there, this is Coach Bill with Meditate School of Mindfulness with a bit of a mindful moment, although this is going to be several moments, I believe, by the time I get all the things I, I've been reflecting on this morning out to the world. What, I wanna, what I've been focusing on, and this really is what my whole practice is built around, is the power of all of us to change, to transform ourselves. We tend to have this belief system or these lessons that we've learned through the years that after we reach a certain age, we don't grow, we don't change. We don't have the ability to learn new things as easily as we did when we were kids. But research shows this isn't true. What we get into is a space as adults that we're so busy with so many other things that we have less time and less space to change and grow, to take the time to practice. The other thing is we've developed this uh, core belief system, and those beliefs might be based on what we truly relate to, but also the stuff that people put on us, the lessons that we learned as kids from our parents and from our teachers and those who we listen to. But the amazing thing is that we can continue to change. We just have to override the programming of our mind. Through the neural pathways, those signals that cause us to do the same thing over and over again, to react the same way to a person who we don't like or feel uncomfortable with, to wake up in the morning and um, go through the same habits, the same routines. Those neural pathways, af after time, get deeper and deeper and deeper. The amazing thing is that through practice, we can change it. Now, this belief has been around for centuries from practicing mindfulness to re practicing repeated behavior. But now the science connects with the truth that what you practice grows stronger. And by changing our habits and focusing on something different, we have the ability to change the structure of the mind. It's not true that our mind is only working in certain parts at certain times. If we're busy with our work, only this part of our brain is working. Or if we're sleeping, our brain is in sleep mode. Well, it is, but it's still thinking, it's still developing, it's still learning. The thing about our mind is it's always training. It's always in training mode. It's either training itself or we can choose the training. We can choose to change. The studies now show through neuroplasticity, we have the ability to overwrite override those programs, those belief systems, those habits. And when we talk about these things and we figure out this is how addiction is formed through repeated behavior by recognizing that at some point we felt happiness or joy or something made us feel good and then we did it again and then we did it again and then all of a sudden we tend to cling to that thing that's going to make us feel good and that becomes a habit which in turn turns into an addiction which I kind of I personally believe that an addiction and a habit are the same thing we just kind of judge them as good or bad right but that's how we have the ability to change the brain is always train training and every time we learn a new skill we develop or learn a new lesson our brain changes and this goes back to the foundation of what I've been teaching ever since I learned the practice of mindfulness is what you practice grows stronger. So what motivates me now is taking my clients and the people I work with and getting them off the cushion. It's not just about sitting in meditation. It's not just pr practice focusing on your breath every once in a while. It's about taking this practice and making it part of our everyday life, changing our life. By keeping our brain active, we keep our brain in transformation, transformational mode. We always have the ability to change where we are and change what we're thinking and build new habits, build new addictions. The mind is addictive. In so many studies that I've done, whether you're studying karma or this practice of sankalpa or meditation, whatever it is, and it's always talking about basically the same thing, just looking at it from different perspectives. That what you practice grows stronger. When you think about the practice of karma, you have to think about the fact that, perhaps think about this phrase, who you are today 
is a result of who you've been in the past. And who you'll be tomorrow will be a result of who you are today. And we see that through this focus of going into these grooves or following the same path or repeated behaviors over and over again, this is how we fall into this base of karma. That this is my life and this is what I've been doing. And if I've always reacted the same way or I always believe the same thing or I listen to the same old voices over and over and over again, then that becomes my routine and that becomes my habit and that's where who I become. So if I'm always surrounding myself by listening to the messages of fear and doubt and worry and hate, then I'm going to become that negatively focused person. Always thinking about who I should fear and who I should hate and who I should doubt and who I should stay away from. Or if I practice focusing on different things, I can see the variations of different people and I don't have to be afraid of everyone, but I keep myself in balance and I see the people I connect with and I see the people I don't. It's changing the behavior. It's changing the patterns on how we move forward. So when I'm working with somebody to overcome an addiction, I always focus on that. I might not always talk about it with my client, but we do at some point talk about the ability that we have to restructure the mind, to overcome and change our brain. The thing is, if we take control and we choose how we're going to change it, we can push it into a positive direction. But if we don't take control and we don't recognize where we are or who we are, then we how do we know what we're changing, right? In our basic premise of mindfulness is we come to a place of peaceful acceptance of who we are and where we are in our life at this very moment. And then we ask ourselves, where do we want to go next? It's the same thing as karma. Who I am now is a result of who I've been before. Everything I've done before in the past has brought me to this point in my life. And I need to accept that because I can't go back and change it as much as I'd like to. I can't go back and change the past. So I have to accept it for what it is. And here I am now. So the thing about focusing on training the brain is we always remember. We need to remember that the mind doesn't judge if something is good or bad. It just falls into the patterns. If we do something over and over and over again, then our mind is going to tell us that's what we're going to keep doing over and over and over again. We can learn bad habits or bad addictions, or we can learn good habits or good addictions, or we can fall in a balanced space. What you practice grows stronger. That's the foundation of what we are going to be focusing on. What am I practicing today and how do I move forward? The way our brain changes is by repeated behavior and action. What am I doing today? What am I doing today over and over again? As we learn new habits, we develop new grooves, new neural pathways. We can rewrite the programming in our mind. It's like changing the structure of everything we do because we can always do it. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter your belief system. It doesn't matter where you are in your life. You have the ability to change to change. Hmm. In the wisdom traditions, we focus on this, taking a pause and breathing. What am I practicing today? What am I practicing today? What am I focusing on every morning when I wake up? How am I responding to this person? How am I responding to what the circumstances in the world about are going on? The amazing thing about the brain and the mind is that it's never really stuck. We tend to get into this place where we have this uh, mindset where we think we're always stuck. The truth is we do have a baseline mindset. We either have, we're born with a positive, I mean not born with, but we develop a positive outcome outlook or we develop a negative outlook. But the thing is we can always change that. We're not always stuck in that same old, same old pattern. One of the ways I always focus on working with clients, and this is why I love what I do, is I focus on the individual. I recognize that just as we all have different fingerprints, we all look differently. Our minds are different. If our minds wouldn't different, be different, then everybody who took a class together would learn the same thing at the same pace, right? Every kid who sat in a math class would be just as smart as the, the kid that's aligned with math. Or every kid could learn music or a foreign language easily. But the truth is, I see it as... Our mind is connected to the passions of our heart, and if we align those two things, then we learn 
what's right for us. I might not be a great math student, and I'm not, where somebody else is. I might not be able to learn a foreign language as easily as someone else. But there are things that I align with and that are my passions, and when I can connect to those things, then everything falls into place, and I'm a learner when it comes to those things. So we all have these different minds. We all have these different things that bring us passion. In a, and the truth is, individually, it's easier to learn the things that we find a passion for, the things we relate to, the things we connect with. So when we, if we don't know what those things are, then where are we focusing our energy on some of the things we don't align with? So if the things that resonate with us are what we're practicing, then they're going to grow faster and stronger. We aren't all musicians. We aren't all painters. We aren't all writers or architects. We're all different. And that's what makes this world so beautiful. The best driver of change, the way we can truly transform ourselves, is through our behavior and how our behavior aligns with our values and passions. And is what I am doing today aligning with my intentions and the passions of my heart? Nothing is more effective in the process of change than connecting to what drives us and what we have a passion for. So, you have, but you have to put in the time. You have to put in the time and always remember, you are an individual. Research, research has shown that the more we challenge ourselves, the more we learn. So this is what my focus is now. It's one thing to teach somebody how to meditate. And they put it on their to-do list and they meditate every day for 20 minutes. But if they're not doing anything with that meditation, then what's the point? It's just something else to do on the to-do list, right? It's about taking that meditation, that mindful practice, and putting it into your everyday life. And remembering, if you focused on gratitude this morning in your meditation, why aren't you focusing on gratitude through the whole day? If you're focusing on being patient as you sit with your breath, why aren't you practicing patience through the day? What you practice grows stronger. And yes, those 20 minutes on a cushion are great. But imagine if you empowered that through your whole day. That's how you change your life. The more we challenge ourselves, the greater the change. And it's one thing to fall into the same old patterns and the same old routines. And all of a sudden, your 20-minute meditation just becomes another habit or addiction. It's like when you go to the gym and you lift the same weight every day. After a while, you reach this plateau, right? There's nothing challenging the muscle to get bigger or stronger. So we have to challenge ourselves. And the more we focus on challenging, and the more we focus on aligning ourselves with our passions, the bigger and stronger that transformation is going to be. Neuroplasticity, which is the way we overwrite the training of our mind, can be both positive and negative by repeated behavior. Or... It can be empowered. Transformation can be empowered by everything we do and everything we don't do. If we don't do something, how will we ever change? If we don't align with the power we have to change, how will we ever grow? It's an individualized practice. And these rules that say it takes a certain amount of time and a certain amount of activity to change are arbitrary. Anybody who says it takes six weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks to enact a habit or to change is just making it up. It's just something they read in a book because each and every one of us is different, right? And I could practice something over and over and over again for 12 weeks. And if it doesn't align with my passions, it's not going to become so strength, strongly embedded and ingrained in my life. But if I find something that really motivates me and drives me and I practice it for a few weeks, it's going to become something I look forward to doing and then it becomes part of my practice and I really do it. So my belief is, and my practice is, personalization. Think about what drives you. Think about what motivates you. And always ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I sitting in meditation this morning? What's the point? Is it just on my to-do list? Or is it something that's going to get me something else? Why am I reading this book? Why am I watching this television show? Why am I listening to the news? Why am I listening to this person tell me their opinion over and over and over again? Why? You're always training your mind, so you should always ask yourself, 
what am I doing today? What am I doing this moment that's going to get me where I need to be tomorrow? And if you're stressed out and anxious and worried, then are the things you're doing feeding that? Is watching the news going to feed that negativity? Is that going to make you more anxious? Is watching this violent show going to bring you peace and calm? What are you exposing yourself to and why? Why am I doing this? And is it going to do what I want it to do? Because as you're watching those things or you're exposing yourself to those things, your brain is training. And you can convince yourself you like something because it's, it stimulates you. The amazing thing about the mind, and we learn about it when we study stress reduction, when we focus on the fact that our mind is always working and it's doing things within us that we have no idea. It's releasing hormones. It's telling us how to move, how to breathe, how to see what we hear. It's always doing something. But if we think about the fact that our brain is either stimulating us or depleting us, why aren't we focusing on the things that really bring us joy and happiness? Because we can watch a violent program or we can watch this drama that releases hormones that stimulate us by releasing certain things. And all of a sudden we tell ourselves, I want more of that. I want more of that. I want more of that. And all of a sudden we're addicted to watching these programs that aren't doing anything for us because they're not connected to our passions and our heart. So what are you practicing today? If you're stressed or anxious, you should be practicing things that don't make you feel stressed or anxious. If you're looking to form more love in your life, you should practice sharing that love. If you're looking for kindness in the world, why aren't you out there being kind and practicing being practicing kindness? What you practice grows stronger. That's the truth. In our wisdom studies, we see that what we put out is reflected back to us, that the universe responds. So whether you're calling it neuroplasticity or training the brain or mindful focus or radical acceptance or training the whatever it is, it's all the same thing. What you practice grows stronger. And there is no doubt that that is the truth. So I have developed a new program that aligns with the practice of mindfulness, but also acceptance and love and compassion and all these other traditions that I teach that I believe takes it to the next level. It's like, what am I doing with my mindful practice? What am I doing with my life? And so through this practice I call equanimity training, it's next level training, we focus on the fact that what am I practicing today that's going to get me where I want to be tomorrow and recognize we're all individuals. So one cooker, cookie cutter program isn't going to work for everyone. It's individualized and you get to choose the direction you take. So if you have a moment you feel like taking it, go to www.meditateu.me and look for equanimity training. If you're interested in it, send me a message. We'll have a consultation. I'll tell you how it could change your life. If it's something you want to study on your own, search the internet. There's plenty of stuff out there. But what I say, what I say is think about what you're doing. Think about why you're doing it and ask yourself, is this what I really want to be doing? What am I doing today that's going to get me where I want to be tomorrow? So this is Coach Bill. Take this for what it's worth, and I hope you have a great day. Sorry about the... It's a beautiful day outside, so I opened all the windows, but it's making me kind of glary. That's okay. It's my voice that matters. It's the message that I'm sending. So have a great day. I'll see you.